call to get call to order at this regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Adjustment of Board of Adjustment on uh, this Monday, November 28th. We'll start the agenda. Um, I guess first of all with the introduction and welcome to our newest member, Mr. Fairboy. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. This can we have a roll call before you come by? You can do that. It's an, a next order on my agenda. <laughs> but we can certainly do that. Well, court order. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we call the order. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have a roll call? Yes. All right. Beth Walker. I'm here. Peter Adolph. Here. Benjamin Beasley. Here. Kenneth Brown. Here. John Riggs. Here. Richard Parsons. Here. Alfred Ballfield absent, Louis Jamison absent. Kenneth Paragoy. Here. John Merrill. Here. PJ Walker. Here. Sarah Applebeck. Here. Ah. <laughs> we have a quorum. And. All right. You really don't need to. Okay. But you can have a seat. Yeah. Okay. Now we will welcome our newest member to the Board of Adjustment, Mr. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I uh, see your name tag. Go back yep, Mr. Yes. Paraboy. Okay. Well, we're glad to have you as part of the team. Well, thank you much. I will note that uh, have, if you have the wrong email address for me, you won't get me there anymore. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll, we'll get that afterwards. Okay. Be sure to give that to um, us so we can get our records cleared up. And the next thing we have is the approval of minutes. You should have all received the minutes from our last meeting in your packet. Did everyone receive the minutes? And has everyone had a chance to review them? Um, there's anything you'd like to bring up now is the time to do that. This being the time, <laughs> I okay. do. I know I'm regarded as quite talented, but those talents do not expand on looking, extend rather, I'm looking at the May minutes to me visibly not being present and yet making a motion at the end to approve a special use permit. I would have been pleased to do it had I been at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Cambridge, Massachusetts at the time. Okay. Do you have a note of that? Um, yes. <laughs> you didn't call it in. On those same minutes. <laughs> I didn't call it in. <laughs> Madam Chair, on those same minutes, yes. uh, it was noted that uh, Sarah was not there, but she made a, a public comments on page on line 64. Uh, she opened the public the meeting for public comments. Okay. That's kind of thank you. Oh, well, you're going <laughs> you're gonna to do well. Yeah, you're going to do well there. We were all That's together in our secret hiding place. Anybody can make a mistake, but you have to have copy and paste to really screw up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Anyone else have any I don't know if it's a matter, but on the November minutes uh, on line 81, Mr. Cochran's name is misspelled. Um, I don't know how picky you all get about minutes, but having been the chair of the Planning and Zoning Board, I get kind of... Oh. <laughs> Good to have everything right for the record. Further additions or comments on the minutes? If there's no further comments, can I get a motion to approve this minute? I move the minutes be approved as amended. Second. All in favor of, of approving the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Um, the new business that we have tonight is the consideration of a special use permit request to construct and operate a mulch storage business on 1.13 acre lot at 3713 Trent Road. This property is located in the C3 commercial district of the Trent Road corridor and is further identified in Craven County Textbook 8207 of Lot 121. 
Um, I'd like to first tell you a little bit about the Board of Adjustment and how we're going to handle um, this item on our agenda. Uh, the Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial body, an administrative body that consists, is consisted of 10 regular members and 3 alternate members. No more than nine regular members appointed by the Board of Aldermen shall reside within the city, and at least one regular member is appointed by the County Board of Commissioners and resides within the city's extraterrestrial planning, extraterritorial planning area. Members must be willing and able to commit the necessary time and energy to carry out the responsibilities required for the position and must attend approximately two hour meetings on the last Monday night of each month. All members have the ability to read and understand complex land ownership and development issues. The members also have backgrounds related to law, real estate, banking, building, environmental groups, governmental agencies, community organizations, etc. It is the responsibility of this board to hear and decide appeals, applications for special use permits, and variances. And what we are going to decide on tonight is a special use permit. Because we are a uh, quasi-judicial board, I will ask that anyone who is here in the public that wishes to make a comment tonight, if you would come in, I'll step, stand up and be sworn in at this time. We only have one that plans on speaking tonight. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you, do you swear or affirm that the evidence that you will give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? All right. Now I'll have uh, Mr. McCoy tell us a little bit about this special use permit. Due to the size of this room, I hope the board doesn't mind if I sit down. <laughs> Alright, this project is the little guy, most business is located at 3713 Trent Road. The reason that we are here because according to section 15-146 of our land use ordinance, outside storage, when it is a major part of the property, a special use permit is required. The property, as I stated earlier, is located at 3713 Trent Road. It is further identified in Craven County tax map as 8-207-121. The property sits on approximately 1.13 acres. The project went before our department review committee on June 17th, included in your packets are the comments from that meeting and the address comments received from the applicant. As I stated earlier, the purpose and the reason that we're here, because outside storage is required according to our table of municipal uses. The use that closely identifies with this is use 10.300. If anybody has any particular questions about the project, I'll be glad to answer them. If not, we have the applicant here along with their representative, Mr. Joe Avalis with Avalis Engineering. Thank you. Would the applicant um, like to take a minute and describe the project to us? Tell us a little bit more about the project. Yes, um, as Greg said, I'm Joe Avalos, Avalos Engineering. I've seen most of y'all here before. Uh, I would like to just uh, say this is the same business that's occurring across the street right now behind Norris Barbecue. They're relocating because of the shopping center construction that's, that's planned for the future. And basically what this is is a mulch storage yard. And uh, you see it there, she's, she's with the business. And what they, they do is sell a lot of different mulch products. And they will be using existing houses in their office, but their mulch operations will be in the, um, that's okay, Greg, I'm, I'm pretty much done pointing, I think, will be in the rear of the facility. The mulch will be screened by vegetation we'll be adding out front, and we'll have concrete um, concrete block walls to kind of wrap, wrap the mulch up, keep it from public view. So uh, 
That's really all I have to say about it. It's a pretty small operation, and like I said, it's the same thing that it's occurs right down the street. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Ms. Edith is here, she also can help. Can I ask you a question about yep. the plan? The, you said the house and is already existing there, so the new area, can you just Show us which the new area yes, really, just the existing the driveways, and we, we've got to improve the driveway out the shrimp road. And what we're adding back here is gravel uh, laid out area storage yard. That's pretty much it. We're putting a, a parking back here with accessible accessibility and um, walkway, and putting uh, accessible bathrooms in the building to comply with the building codes. That's really all we're putting up there. Put in mulch storage bins and, and screen it. Joe, I noticed that, that you said in your comments you don't need a stormwater permit or city nitrogen. You're adding a lot of appropriate surface with the crush. We're adding less than 10,000 square feet, so we don't hit the threshold for city or, or state. Okay. Okay. We, we stayed under that on purpose. The existing doesn't count against us, so um, we stayed under. Does the board have any additional questions for Mr. Adams? The, the second driveway, that's a looped driveway, and on the right there's access right. Uh, down there. Is that going to be improved and used so that you're going to have two driveway per, uh, cuts you know, right pretty close to each other? We just really going to use that first one there as our main driveway. And, uh, it'll loop out, but the, most of their traffic that comes in here gets it. We use that wider improvement. I noticed that the land behind it has been cleared. Does that have anything to do with this? Yes, sir. No. No. I noticed that the old biker bar, if you look at this, looks like it's part of the site, although I know it isn't. Just tell me it isn't. What you're looking at, you're looking at a map, and we are required by law to notify adjacent property owners within 100 feet. Ah. So that shaded area. Is that? Right, that I think it's called the Ice House. Ice House is located in that, so that's what that's it. Is. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We may have to jump back up again, but um, as we are reviewing this for the special use of permit, the Board of Adjustment considers. Six, um, we have six considerations that we would go over, and we want to find the facts that support our consideration and make our decision based only on these, these six considerations. Um, the six considerations are that the requested permit is within the jurisdiction according to the table of permissible uses, that the application is complete. That if completed as proposed in the application, this development will comply with all the requirements of this ordinance. That the use will not materially endanger the public health or safety if located where proposed and developed according to the plan submitted. That this use will not substantially reduce the value of the joining or abutting property or the use as a public necessity. And that the location and character of the use, if developed according to the plan submitted and approved, will be in harmony with the area in which it's located and in general conformity with the plan of development of the city. Um, we've had the applicant describe the, project, um, the project, and we have no one be sworn in for public comments. But at this time, I'm opening it up if there's any public. Uh, I have a final question. Sure. Um, for the overlay district, um, I mean, it's not a building. Are they putting up concrete barriers and then the mulch is going inside those barriers? Yes, it'll be concrete, concrete blocks. Concrete blocks. Is right. there anything in the overlay district that talks about um, this kind of structure? No, no, no. You're mainly talking about buildings. Right, and, and there's no building. Yeah, there's no say. building. Right. But, I mean, those blocks, are they, I mean, I'm just trying to imagine what it's going to look like in the end, and these are all around town. 
like they have across the street. So we wanted something that's pretty stationary and yeah, right. If you ever go down Highway 70, I don't know what kind of concrete block you're planning to use, but if you go down Highway 70 to that bulk yard down there, I think past Dame City, they have the big concrete chunks of blocks. Yeah, down there, they and they're very unattractive. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a recommendation for something else, we'll be glad to consider it. But at the, when we looked at it, we just. Is felt this that going to be standard concrete block, or is it going to be these huge? Really hasn't been specified. It's uh, it was a recommendation that was brought up. It's, it's open for discussion. It's just concrete block. I, I just a typical stack eight-inch concrete block's not going to stay up there much more than put in place. It should. Do you, do you know if you're going to use a larger block? Yeah, you know, the larger types, heavier, heavier type block. One thing I think that, that should be noted is that that area in James City that you're talking about. That has kind of deteriorated over time. I mean, those blocks are not the way they, I imagine they were originally. The, the mulch and other items are overflowing, some of those bricks, so it's really not been maintained adequately. So hopefully the little guys will do better at that. <laughs> well, I think the fact that you're going to see a solid wall you know, will probably help with that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if, you plant, if the requirement for planting in front of it should help. I agree. I agree. I think you're right, Sarah. It'll have the appearance of a fence at the back okay. of the property. I think for a sense of completeness of the application that we need to know the dimensions of these blocks. We've heard it's going to be six feet high, but are they going to be two by two by four feet or two by four by six feet or what? How big are the blocks? Eight inches. I would like to add this, this mulch yard is, um, if you ride by there, it's pretty far back off the road. It's, it's yeah. way mm -hmm. back in the back. And it's on a down level, too. Yeah. I'm going to put vegetation there and it being so far mm -hmm. behind the house. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Greg, when you talk about the screening of that concrete yeah. block, that's oh, right. going to be there. What's this going to be? What, are, what is the city, what is the staff envisioning for the, for well, the property? Well, we're talking about a tree every 30 feet on center, on center, and the tree will have to be approved. So we want something with a canopy now. If you want to add additional, you can have a mound there, you can have shrubbery that's similar to a type A screen. But the reason that I didn't mention the different screens, A, B, or C, because a tree is required every 50 feet. Here, the, the distance here, according from this point to this point, is approximately 120 feet. You add, if you remove this existing garage, you're talking about 110 square feet. So your first tree would be right about here, your second one right about there, and every 30 feet. So that's so if it's 120 feet, you're only going to have four trees. That's correct. However, you're looking at about 110 if you take off this if you remove this so you're talking about one two three four every about four trees well, and if you want the board can add <coughs> as a condition, as well, a condition. Well, my question is you said that staff recommended concrete blocks because you didn't want the slabs right so what kind of concrete blocks is the staff recommended regular eight inch block or these Two by two by four feet massive. That's a good question. That's no answer. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're, you're right. <laughs> so what what was staff envisioning? Concrete block or we were talking something similar to what they have out in James City. However, Joe, I'm gonna let you chide in on this. Well, I think we're open to doing whatever the board recommends. You know, within reason to make it look well, you know, good. The, um, like I said, the separation, the screen. If we need to add more screen besides the four trees, shrubs, you know, we're glad to do that. That's, that's actually the best way to make anything look fine out there. Four trees is really 
light duty if you need to add some variegated privet or something like okay. that that grows fast, screens Wax myrtle or does that Wax exactly. myrtle or quick, quick growth, that's uh, it's easily done. All right, but now your question regarding the blocks. Are we approving 8 inch concrete block or are we approving those big heavy concrete things? That's what I'm It's up to the board. And I know we've kind of gone down this this path and really the third thing we're looking at is that will require with this development comply with the requirements of the ordinance. Um, we're still looking at number sure. two is the application complete. I don't think the application okay, is complete if it doesn't tell us I mean You'd I, I see that. I, yeah. I mean it sounds like the city was interested in, in replicating what happened in James City. So I mean that's an oversized two by two by four feet concrete block and not, I mean, I would say definitely not an eight inch concrete block. That's not what we envisioned. But, you know, if you've got a large oversized concrete block with, you know, some shrubs and trees in front of it and it's set back 150, 200 feet from current road, goodness, you know, you'll never well, see it. Well, I'm, I'm fine with that if the applicant is going to stipulate that that's what it is. I think that we could probably just make it a condition you know, that would be fine with me too. That's okay. 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 I think that's a good way to handle it. Make it a condition of what type of concrete block. Because it is a condition right now that we will consider if we, if we move forward with this application. Uh, it's one that's been recommended. So make a note of that of how we want to. And I think we really do need to add some shrubbery screening between okay. the trees, yeah. four trees. Oh, Especially with two inch caliber trees, you're going to see eight inches of screening. All right. So you recommend wax myrtles between uh, a, a, a shrub. Uh, okay. For, like I think Joe said, variegated privet, wax myrtle, anything that gets bushy and becomes an opaque screen. Okay. So we're thinking as conditions, we would like to. Um, determine what kind of structure, what kind of concrete block, and then some additional vegetative screening. Would blocks be more than, I mean? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't stack them because they won't stand, but if they're more than, they'll stay. Well, these things, they're like Legos, aren't they? Yeah. they, don't, they, have they I think they've got a divot, and you just kind of stack it. They're dry stacked. They lock together? Yeah. These large oversized The large oversized Oh, well, yeah, those do. Oh, they do. When they lock them? Mm -hmm. A, a regular eight by eight, you have to mortar that in price. Yeah. Mean, being a brick mason, I have to tell you, you have to mortar them in. You can yeah. use a eight, eight inch block or a 12 inch block. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're gonna. They were talking about the two foot by two foot by four foot. It's a, a and it's got a, a lot. Yeah, got a locking. Definitely not an eight inch. So. All right. So you're saying that we need to put in the the block that you just mentioned. Yeah, of course. The thing about it. We were going to put all these heavy duty blocks in there if that wasn't what they were planning. And the only thing they're going to hold is much. How much problem can most be if you put a row of blocks like that? If he had to mortar them in, they mortared in if you get the big ones. And I don't think he want to spend $2,000 to make a wall to keep marching. I wouldn't. But I could go cheaper and get the same results. You know, we want to have it done right, but we don't want to try to break them to get them to get it ready. Because when you ain't business, you ain't business to try to save money, but you still want to meet all the guidelines. And I don't know what block costs down, especially on big jokers. But the uh, smaller block is, you know, and that's what they're going to do, whichever one they're going to do. But uh, that big block could cost probably, what, five of them, uh, the agents from the cost. costs a lot more, but then you know, the labor's not there. So it's kind of like gets gets to be a wash almost. Yeah. A lot of like most mulch yards I see use the heavy concrete block too. The issue is not the mulch; it's the machinery that runs in that there. You know, the bobcat and scoops it up, the loading and so forth. It's the pushing on the sides and the and the back of the thing creates that pressure and it creates the movement of the walls and so forth, which is 
what we've seen in other places. And it's the goal, I believe, of the, the requirement for the concrete block walls. I, that's a good point of not wanting to add additional burden to the applicant. I believe the goal was as an aesthetic one. Um, can we accomplish the same goal with more vegetation? And you know, good side. Well, I don't think we need to decide this for the applicant. I, I would invite them to make a decision and tell us, what do you want to do? <laughs> and, well, we originally had this drawing put a wood fence across there. Yeah. And no one really complains about the aesthetics of the wood fence. You can see them all over the place. So we're still, uh, that's what our preference would be, just a wood fence. The, the appearance is fine, and, and we can build the wood fence strong enough that it serves our purpose to be six by six posts, beat the fence up. And that in conjunction with the vegetation would, would look more natural out there than I think the product that you're talking about is big things that are concrete or called it's called ready rock and it's used to used in highway construction, you know, massive earthwork type projects. And we're really not massive. All we're in the business of out here is dealing with mulch. Mulch itself isn't an unpleasant looking product. <laughs> and so I really, I think our preference would be a, a stout wood fence, well screened, and let it roll with it. And that is what is existing right now at the property across the street, correct? Wood fence with the mulch? Yeah, right, and that's what our, our, our proposal was. So that, that's a real preference. Right there. Okay. It's more economical. It's uh, obtained locally easily. If we had these big massive rocks, they'd have to be trucked in for wherever they're manufactured, which I know is not around here. Uh, something that could be built by the people that are in the business out there quite readily. And uh, throughout, we would prefer. So the applicant's original application is with the wood fence, and that would be the preference. So that would be the preference. And doesn't the land drop down there anyway in that part of the lot? Pretty flat lot. It drops off behind where they're having the. Oh, that's further down. Yeah, further down. down. I don't have a problem with wood fence. Maybe a stained wood fence. Um, you know, I, I would kind of like to see what it looks like, <laughs> but I guess that's not really technically in our purview exactly what it looks like. Um, I don't have a trouble with the wood fence that they like they have currently at their position, at their location now. If it's screened properly, it's like I said, what you said, 200 feet back, right. and we put put adequate screening there. It's not going. If we screen it properly, it's not going to matter if it's concrete, wood, or chicken wire. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't that be treated wood? Yes. And it will gray naturally. I, I think blend. And no trouble with the, that that wood structure at all, with the appropriate screening in front of it. Really blend in better than the concrete and gray back there. Yeah, I think so. I agree. All right, and so we'll go with that. Uh, here's the thing. That's one of the conditions that they got. But I guess the condition can be wiped out if everybody agrees that. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we can remove the condition that it be concrete block, but we can add the condition that they have additional screening in the form of vegetation, shrubs, and something lower. Trees that are proposed. So does that satisfy in terms of the completeness of a? Uh, yes. Okay. Being complete that as it is originally presented with the wood fence. Okay. Um, does anyone have any concerns or? questions about whether or not this development will comply with all the requirements of the ordinance. <coughs> Our fourth consideration is that this use will not materially endanger the public health or safety that's located for the post, according to the plan submitted. the improvement to accommodate the public with the accessible parking. 
Yeah. It impresses me as in every way an improvement of what they've got now, which is perfectly fine and it's even better. Any other questions? concerns for health and public safety. Um, the fifth consideration is that this will not substantially reduce the value of the joining or budding property or that the use is in public necessity. Yeah. Any concerns from the board? Would you like to discuss concerning that? The property on one side is the ice house, which is a, a derelict building, and yeah. on the other side was a piece of property that uh, was proposed for an apartment complex. Uh, so it, I, I don't think it, whether that ever happens or not, I don't know, but uh, it was rezoned to allow an right. apartment complex back there, mm -hmm. next door to it. Well, and as you know, it's not part of changing any of the zoning, I don't think it will affect the the value of the land. Um, the final consideration that we have uh, is that the location and the character of the use that developed according to the plan submitted and approved will be in harmony with the area of where it's located and in general conformity with the development of the city. I think Sarah, you brought up some good points earlier about the overlay plan that we can already considered. Is there anything else anyone would like to discuss? Does anybody on the board have any additional questions or concerns for the applicant before we close well, we public? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to close public comment. It's been open this whole time, <laughs> so I need to officially close the time of public comment. And I'm going to ask before that, if you have any other questions you want to ask the applicant. Okay. I feel like we're, we're kind of repeating everything we already went through, but if, as we're looking at each of these considerations and um, deciding whether we think it is in conformity or not, I would like to um, bring out the facts that were discussed, and especially if you're making a motion, if you will try to attach it to something that um, we discussed. I have a procedural question. At what mm -hmm. point do we stipulate additional screening? I believe. Was that at the end, or do we end? do that? Yes, we decide conditions. to give it okay. an application? Okay. Yes, at the end. That's a great question. So the, the conditions will be stipulated oh, if it receives an application. A permit, so we have the application. So the very first one, that the requested permit is within the jurisdiction according to the table of permissible uses. We find that to be the case, and if so, does one make a motion? I, that? I move that we find that the requested permit, uh, that based on what we have heard here tonight, that the requested permit is within the jurisdiction according to the table of permissible uses. We have a motion that it is within the um, table of municipal uses. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Sarah Alphabet? Yes. Beth Walker? Yes. Kenneth Brown? Yes. Benjamin Beasley? Yes. Kenneth Paragoy? Yes. John Merrill? Yes. Richard Parsons? Yes. John Riggs? Yes. PJ Walker? Yes. Peter Adolph? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, our second consideration. Mm -hmm. No, did you call me? Yeah. No, he got me. Yeah, he's okay. the second one. <laughs> Thanks, though. Our second consideration is that the application is complete. Had some good discussion about that. Do we feel that it's complete? I make the motion that the application is complete with all the requirements being met by the city. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we get a roll call vote for that? Sarah Alphabet? Yes. Beth Walker? Yes. 
Kenneth Brown. Yes. Benjamin Beasley. Yes. Kenneth Paragoy. Yes. John Merrill. Yes. Richard Parsons. Yes. <coughs> John Riggs. Yes. T.J. Walker. Yes. Eva Adolf. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Our third consideration that is, if this project is completed as proposed in the application, the development will comply with all the requirements of this ordinance. I make a motion that if this project is completed, it will comply with all the requirements of this ordinance based on the site plan submitted and the discussion tonight of um, the ordinances and the overlay district. Second. We have a motion and a second for number three. Can I get a roll call vote for that, please? Sarah Alphabet. Yes. Beth Walker. Yes. Kenneth Brown. Yes. Benjamin Beasley. Yes. Kenneth Perigore? Yes. John Merrill? Yes. Richard Parsons? Yes. John Riggs? Yes. P.J. Walker? Yes. Pete Adolph? Yes. Ocean Harris. Uh, we would also like to consider that this use will not materially endanger the public health or safety if located where proposed and developed according to these plans that have been submitted. I make a motion that this project will not materially endanger the public health or safety if located or proposed or developed um, according to the plan submitted um, based on the, um, the zoning of the project being C3 and uh, not really increasing traffic and uh, parking spaces provided. Second. I have a motion and a second for consideration number four. Can I get a roll call this, please? Sarah Applebeck? Yes. Beth Walker? Yes. Kenneth Brown? Yes. Benjamin Beasley? Yes. Kenneth Paragoy? Yes. John Merrill? Yes. Richard Parsons? Yes. John Riggs? Yes. P.J. Walker? Yes. Peter Adol? Yes. Ocean Carey? Our fifth consideration is that this development will not substantially reduce the value of adjoining or abutting property if this use is a public necessity. Well, I move that the, this use as submitted will not substantially reduce the value of adjoining or abutting property, and despite the fact that it is not a public necessity. Okay. Second. A motion and a second. Can we get a roll call vote? Sarah Alphabet? Yes. Beth Walker? Yes. Kenneth Brown? Yes. Benjamin Beasley? Yes. Kenneth Paragoy? Yes. John Merrill? Yes. Richard Parsons? Yes. John Riggs? Yes. P.J. Walker? Yes. Peter Adolph? Yes. Walker Harris? And finally, the location and the character of the use is developed according to the plan submitted and approved will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located and in general conformity with the plan of development for the city. No motion for that. Well, I move based on the facts that uh, has been presented here tonight <coughs> that the location and character of the use, if proper, if developed according to the plan as submitted and approved, will be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located, and in general conformity with the plan of development of the city. Motion and a second for that. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Sarah Alphabet. Yes. Beth Walker. Yes. Kenneth Brown. Yes. Benjamin Beasley. Yes. Kenneth Paragoy. Yes. John Merrill. Yes. Richard Parsons? Yes. John Riggs? Yes. P.J. Walker? Yes. Peter Adolf? Yes. Motion carries. All of those um, carried. It looks like we have everything we need to um, provide a permit for this if we have a motion for that. Uh, and then do we do conditions afterwards or do we do it before? Before? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thought the conditions came after. So, in order to um, issue a permit, are there conditions that we would like to add as board adjustment? Uh, yes. Um, 
but I want a clarification. So in the application, it stated that they wanted to do a fence, so we don't have to make that a condition at all, right? Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So the conditions, uh, I make a motion that we make a condition that um, the storage bins must be located in the rear of the property as noted on the plan and that four trees are required every 30 feet on center in front of the storage bins parallel to Trent Road plus additional shrubbery screening at three feet on center? Yes. Is that right? Yes. We can and we can require the type of shrubbery. I think well staff recommends wax myrtles because they grow fast and yeah. they get a height to It'd be good. hide that. So shrubbery um, <coughs> uh, shrubbery planted with approval of staff uh, right. type and location. Definitely. Second, did you say it? That was a second, I guess. No, it wasn't even recalling for a second. It was a motion. It needs a second. It, yeah. It's got one. All right. <laughs> that is the motion to um, apply the conditions as listed and issue a permit for this project with those conditions. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I didn't say those words, but I also make a motion to. <laughs> <laughs> It sounded so official. We thought it was with a motion. Conditions. Oh, we're, we're going I was doing the conditions, not the permit, but it should be all one word. So we have a motion for the permit with the conditions? Yeah. And a second. Correct. Ten seconds. Or a second. And we need one more roll call vote. Sarah Affleck. Yes. Beth Walker. Yes. Kenneth Brown. Yes. Benjamin Beasley. Yes. Ken Paragoy. Yes. John Merrill. Yes. Richard Parsons. Yes. John Riggs. Yes. T.J. Walker. Yes. T.J. Adolph. Yes. Motion carries. And we need a motion to approve or... No, that was in the... That was in the... Overall to, to issue the special use plan. Okay. So that was just the motion for the... <coughs> the condition. I make a motion that we approve the special use of the all requirements from there. Second. One more vote, please. Sarah Affleck. Yes. Beth Walker. Yes. Kenneth Brown. Yes. Benjamin Beasley. Yes. Kenneth Caragoy. Yes. John Merrill. Yes. Richard Parsons. Yes. John Riggs. Yes. T.J. Walker. Yes. T.J. Adolph. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> I believe, do we have any other business? Yes. I passed out some documents and no. we okay. want the board to approve the 2017 calendar. Everyone had a chance to look at the calendar? I moved to 27. Or we're going to be doing 12 months from <laughs> now. There's no objections then. Can I have a motion to approve the calendar? So moved. Do we need a roll call vote or a majority vote? Majority All in favor of approving the calendar for next year? Aye. 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 All opposed? Included in your document are the new table of permissible uses. You can take that home to review it. You can use, replace that, remove your old one. We had some changes, several edits to the ordinance. We removed conditional use permits. Before, we had three types of permits. The zoning permit, special use permit, and the conditional use permit. A lot of municipalities, they use either special use or conditional use permit. So now everything that was conditional use goes over to special use. Also included in your packet, as Kip mentioned earlier, I'm going to update this email address, but you have the new membership roster and 
the appointment roster. Other than that, I don't have anything. Okay. With that, we'll adjourn this meeting. I have a motion. Oh, sorry. We have to have a motion to adjourn. Have a adjourn as well. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Chairman Applebaum. In a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed?